talk to you just a little bit today about grace, okay? In, in, Zechariah, in Zechariah chapter 4, I'll read you verses, four th- or verses 6 through 10. It says, So he answered to me, and he said, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? For Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. That, that word, if you look it up, it means a smooth plain. He says, and, and he will bring forth the capstone, and with shouts of grace, grace to it. And it goes on to say, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hand of Zerubbabel, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small beginnings? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. That word plumb line, that actually means... These, 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 it says that these are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro. What he's ending up there with, he said, Hey, I've waited to see this capstone in your hands, Jerubal. <clears throat> how many ever, how many ever, I, I want to use the, this story this morning just to maybe help and to edify and maybe to fire you up a little bit and maybe to uh, encourage you, but how, how many ever... How many ever needed a miracle? How many ever faced something that you just really didn't know how to handle? Did it, is there anybody here that ever went through anything that was just so overwhelming that, that, you, that you didn't know how to handle it? And, 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 and you've, is there anybody here who hadn't been in, at times in your life when you were fighting and, and, and you were believing and you were, you were standing for something and it seemed, like, it seemed like forever and it seemed like nothing was happening and, 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 and you felt those times of, of frustration and, and uh, uh, you know, helplessness and hopelessness. We probably all, all have been there. We've all been there. I want to, I'm believing the Holy Spirit to get something so deep into your spirit today that your life will never be the same. How many think that would be good? How many would like that? How many would say, do it to me? Do it to me. I've, I've been studying grace a lot, I, I, and I've learned that I found I found that the all I've found so far is four levels of grace that the Bible talks about, and I'm just saying that's that's just what I found so far because I believe again, like I said, that this grace of God is 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 multifaceted. I mean, this is this grace of God is so tremendous and so big that we're going to be for eternity learning and and seeing new levels of this grace of God. Sounds pretty exciting. But the four levels that I've, that I've found in the Bible is in Ephesians 2, it talks about saving grace. Paul says, for by grace are you saved, not by works. Saving grace, something that you can't earn, something that you, that you don't deserve, something that's a gift, something that's given to you. Uh, somebody said, you don't get good to get God, you get God to get good. I'm talking about something that you can't earn, something that you don't deserve, something that He just loved you so much that by His grace, He just pulled you through. How many praise God for saving grace? In Romans 3, the Bible talks about justifying grace justifying grace it says by grace we're justified and 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 it goes on to say that thereby we have peace with god because we're justified with him and and i thought about that word justified and that word justified means just if i'd never sinned just if i'd never sinned is the way god sees me 
Isn't that good? Isn't that great? You see, His grace not only saves you, but then His grace takes it another level, and His grace justifies you. In the eyes of God, you know, I know sometimes you remember how bad you are, and sometimes you meditate and think on the things that, 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 God, that, that, that you've done wrong. And, but, but, you know, in the eyes of God, that blood of Jesus just dust, justifies. It just, it's just He looks at you like you've never sinned. Wow. Talk about a clean slate. In Titus 2... It talks about another level of faith. It talks about a level of faith that's called teaching faith. Uh, I believe this is a message that the church, for a large part today, is missing. We're not, uh, we're not thinking about this. We're not preaching this. But he says that the grace of God has appeared to us, and he says this, listen to this, says, teaching us that denying ungodliness... And works of, and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously in this God and godly in this present age. In other words, do you understand what he's saying there to Titus? He's saying he's saying that that the grace of God, the grace of God will cause you to live. It'll teach you to live right. You know, when I hear people say. I'm under grace, I can just live any way I want to live. That bothers me. You know, I mean, I'm under grace, I can just sleep with my girlfriend, or I can just sleep with my boyfriend, I'm under grace. I can just commit adultery, I mean, I'm under break, under grace, I can, I mean, I can, I can, I can fudge a little on this business deal, I'm under grace, I can, I can, you know, I can stretch the rules a little bit, I mean, I'm under grace, and after all, you know, God loves me. <clears throat> Let me tell you, any time you catch yourself thinking that way, you're not under, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're not under grace. Uh, let me say it a way that you can understand it. If what you have is not making you want to be more like Jesus, you don't have Jesus. You got religion. You with me? Because, see, this kind of grace that I'm talking about, when, when, when He comes to you, It'll, it'll transform you. I, this, this, kind of, this kind of teaching grace that I'm talking about, when it comes to you, man, it'll, I mean, Jesus comes to you, He'll change your life. This, this, kind of grace, this kind of grace will give you the power to walk away from who you used to be and lead you and guide you into what God wants you to be. Are you with me? Grace that teaches us to reframe and to leave and to walk away from ungodliness, but causes us and teaches us to live a godly, consecrated life to the Lord. Teaching grace. I was okay with the first one and the second one. How about you? Oh, I just want you to understand, see, so, so, so God's grace saves you when you didn't deserve it. And then His grace justifies you. It makes you right in His eyes. And then it teaches you. It teaches you how to live. It teaches you. And, 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 and Jesus changes you from the inside out. He revolutionizes your life. He changes you. He changes that want to in there. Does that make sense? See, it's not a bunch of rules. It's not a bunch of things. Don't do this and do this and don't do that. No, no. He changes this kind of grace. I'm talking about changes your want to. <laughs> well, but that's not what I came to talk to you about this morning. I came to talk to you about the next level of grace. How many know those, those, that would make a pretty good sermon right there? If we didn't get any more, we could go home. But we won't yet. There's a fourth level of grace that I've discovered. It's an, an enabling 
grace and enabling grace. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, he said, he said three times, three times I asked the Lord to take this thorn away from me. Three times I went to Him, and three times He told me, My grace is sufficient. See, I mean, Paul took this thorn in the flesh to the throne of God, to the throne of grace, took this thorn in the flesh to him three times. And instead of, instead of God taking the thorn away from him, instead of him removing the issue, he gave Paul power to overcome the issue. He gave him power to defeat the issue. Talking about enabling grace. See, sometimes, sometimes uh, we just, sometimes God just miraculously takes care of things. How many know that? I mean, do you ever have anything? And, and, and you know, when I said it earlier, I said, how many need a miracle? Well, we all want a miracle. And sometimes just miraculously, it seems like instantly, it, it, it doesn't, and we, we like, he takes care of it, and we like that part. You know why? Because we're kind of a microwave generation, aren't we? Huh? You with me? Now, you can relax. You know, I'm not getting on you. We already got past the teaching you to live right thing now. Uh, we like things to happen fast, don't we? I heard somebody say, we're a microwave generation. The only problem is we serve a crockpot God. I like that phrase. think I'll steal some more of that guy's stuff. See, sometimes God will allow grace to come on you that enables you to overcome the obstacle that's in front of you. That's, that, that, that's what he's talking about in Hebrews 4, 16, when he says, Let us come boldly to what? To the throne of grace. So that we can, so that we can get help when we need it. So we come boldly to the throne of grace so we can get that grace. We can get that help. We can get that power when we're in trouble. How many ever been in trouble? How many know that's when we need it? Maybe you'll understand that verse and your approach to that throne a little bit more by the time we get done. <clears throat> you see, what I'm saying is there's a place, there's a place where, where God's grace will come on you. There's a place you can get with God and His grace will come on you. And, 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 and you can bring all your issues, your real issues, your problems, your challenges. You, you can bring all those things and, 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 and you can call on that enabling grace and that grace of God will come on you and it will empower you to overcome. It will empower you to defeat those mountains, those adversaries. It'll, 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 it'll cause those giants to fall before you. It's the enabling grace of God. That's what got a hold of Zerubbabel here. That's what God's talking about to him. He went, see, see probably most of us know the story, but Zerubbabel went back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. It had been leveled. The walls had been leveled. Matter of fact, the whole town, for the most part, had been leveled. And, 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 and so Zerubbabel goes back. He goes back to the temple. He says, I'm going to go back. I'm going to rebuild the city. I'm going to rebuild the temple. I'm going to re rebuild the walls. I'm gonna, we're we're going to rebuild our lives. And I love the fact that the first thing he started with was the, was the house of God, the temple. Can I just say something? You will never go wrong by putting God and His things first. Never. Never. You'll never go wrong by making the things of God important and valuable. 
But, he, but, he, but he, doesn't, he doesn't go build his own house. He doesn't go build. He goes and builds, and it says he lays a foundation for the temple. The foundation for the house of God. He says he laid the foundation, and, is a, and immediately, the Bible says, <coughs> a giant came up. He laid the foundation immediately, he says there's a mountain there. A mountain raised up against him spiritually. You know, I've learned something. You can't, you can't do anything. You can't believe for anything. You can't accomplish anything God's told you to do or set before you to do without a mountain raising up. How many has ever seen a mountain? There's the, there's the, you, you can't get anything accomplished for God without a mountain being there. It just seems like spiritually the enemy always just raises up a mountain because he wants to keep you, he wants to keep me from stepping in and, 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 being, and being and having all God wants us to be and all he wants us to have. And if we can understand that mountain and understand that that's why that mountain's there, it's not because of God's disapproval. It's not because He's upset with you. It's not because you did something wrong. It's because the enemy doesn't want you to see and experience what God has for you. It is, Kenny. Thank you. I love what he does here, though. It says, says first thing he does, he says, Who is this mountain? Huh? Who are you? He starts, he starts talking to this mountain. He starts talking to this mountain in his life. And isn't that what Jesus told us to do in Mark 11? He said, speak to those mountains. That's what Zerubbabel starts doing. You know, those mountains, this, those, the mountains always represent the problems in your life, the obstacles, the things that come to stop us, the things that hinder us and defeat us, come to defeat us. When this mountain popped up in his life, he just began to speak to it. He, he didn't let the mountain intimidate him. Huh? He, did just, he just began to, he said, he, you know, in, uh, that's what Jesus told us to do, by the way, in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He said, he said, just whosoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. Well, that just sounds too easy, Hank. I know, and it is. <laughs> but he, but Zerubbabel here, Zerubbabel's talking to his mountain, and 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 we have to talk to our mountains. But he's talking to the mountain. He says, "Who are you? Identify yourself. Tell me, tell me who you are, because because God's about to make you a smooth plain. You understand his attitude." Come on, who are you? Stick your head up. My God's about to take care of you. So he begins to identify this mountain. And I'll, and I'll go quickly here, but he begins to identify this mountain. And, and, and to see the, the more of the story, you have to go to Ezra 4. And I'll just talk real quick about it. But the Bible says that he had laid the foundation for the temple. He had laid the foundation, and he had to quit a while. After he got the foundation, he says, he says what, what was this mountain that raised up to stop him from building the temple? Well, it says, the story says it's people who troubled him. In other words, this is what happened. Whenever he began to make, he laid the foundation of the temple, whenever he began to do that and he got the foundation all laid, people found out he was going to rebuild the temple and he was going to rebuild the walls and he was going to rebuild the city, and they didn't like it. They, they, they didn't like God doing anything. They didn't like what God, the God's people or what they were going to do. And so they began, they came in, they came in and made camp on the on the land they came in and they came on the property they came in and and uh one one gentleman said that they, they they did they had squatters rights they came in and they made camp on the property and they began to petition and they began to write letters to the king the the bible says they hired counselors and attorneys and and in the language where we could understand it they started writing letters and sending petitions to the king trying to get him to stop this they're saying he doesn't have the right permits he doesn't have the right things he he doesn't have any right the government hadn't told him he could do this nobody's nobody he doesn't fit the building code you got to stop this And the Bible says, 
that they took up squatters' rights. They, they pitched, they, 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 they made a camp on the property to keep him from finishing the temple. You know, it's, it kind of reminds me of the devil. And, and, and you know, how many of us, he'll move in on your property. He'll move in in your affairs. He'll move into your life. He'll move in there and he'll just set up squatters right. He'll just try to buffalo you. He'll just try to stop you. And, and I've learned something about him. You can't be nice and get him to leave. You just got to kick him out. Everybody say, kick him out. Now, you're not strong enough to kick him out, but Jesus is. So, so, so stay, with, stay with me here. He's laid the foundation, and, 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 and for six, he, in 525 B.C. is when he, when he laid this foundation. It was 16 years had passed, and these people were still... Writing letters and signing permits and, 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 and getting affidavits and, 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 and all the rest. They were stopping the progress. Do you, see how, do you see how Zerubbabel must have begun to feel? He must have begun to get a little frustrated, a little, little upset, a little, little bogged down. What am I going to do kind of feeling? And, 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 and if you read the story, you find out that, that it wasn't enough that he had problems on the outside. You know, he had all the lawsuits and all the, legal, all the legal tactics and all the rest of it. That wasn't enough, but it says that he had problems on the inside. See, the, the Samaritans came to help him. And, and, and see, the Samaritans were half Jew and half Gentile. The Samaritans rep- represent somebody that's half-hearted. And so the Samaritans came in, and, and, and they, they were acting like they were going to help, and they wanted to help, but, but the Bible says they began to, to talk about things. They began to say things. They began to talk about the glory days. They began to say things like, oh, uh, you might get the temple rebuilt, but it'll never be as great as Solomon's temple was. Oh, you, you, you know, you, 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 I mean, it, it'll be good. It might be okay, but, 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 but I remember the glory days. I remember how God used to do i remember i remember yeah you hear what i'm talking about the half-hearted i you know they want to go at it and they want to do something but but it's always just half-heartedness i remember the power of god it'll never be like that again and so they start talking like that how many know words have power words have power so he not only had the problems on the outside, he had the half-hearted people on the inside. You ever, were you ever sick? You're fighting a physical battle, and somebody come up to you and say, I'll pray for you, but you looked at their face, and you heard what they said, and there's always a but. I'll pray for you, but, but, but I remember somebody else that had this and it didn't work for them. But, but I'll pray for you. You understand what I'm talking about? Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, Pastor. Or, or I'm with you. You ever had somebody come to you and say, I'm with you. I'm behind you. And you turned around and looked, yeah, way behind me. You know what I'm talking about, the half-hearted people. The people that, that want to come pray for you, but they don't really believe God's going to do anything for you. Don't let them pray for you. Just say, praise God, thank you, love you, see you later. Words have power. So he not only had all the problems on the outside, but he had the problems on the inside. So he's got all these enemies fighting against him. You know, nothing's, nothing's more frustrating than trying to fulfill a vision and you've got half-hearted people on your team. Huh? You ever notice that? You ever business, whatever? So anyway, he's got all these. Can, can you imagine how, how Zerubbabel's beginning to feel? You imagine how how you know uh, you know how how frustrated he's been to get. Let me let me ask you: What about your vision? What about you? What you're believing God for? Hey, have you ever got to that place where you just thought, I just don't know if it's ever going to happen. I just don't know. You know uh, that that mountain you're facing. It just looks like there's no way. It looks like I, I just don't know how. And that's how Zerubbabel felt. Man, he's he's got the foundation laid, and 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 and, and, and you know the tumbleweeds growing up, and 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 the the sands blown up on it. It's almost covered up. You can't even hardly see the foundation, and and and. and 
said, here's old Zerubbabel, 16 years, division's dying. He said, man, there's no way. You ever feel that way? Started good. But what in the world am I facing? This, this frustrating mountain. This, you know, what, 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 what am I going to do? The problem's on the outside, and the problem, the doubt's on the inside. And, and, and you know what kept the children of Israel from entering in the promised land? It wasn't the giants. It was the ten little voices that were within. Let me tell you something. The thing that will stop you from getting what God's got for you, the thing that will stop you from getting what, 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 what you're believing for, the thing that will move that mountain, isn't, isn't those giants out there. It's those little voices inside that we listen to. Those little voices that tell us, you know, they're, they're, they're telling you you can't do it. Better men than you have tried. God, God must not be with you. I mean, if He was pleased with you, this wouldn't be happening in your life. The, 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 the favor of God's not with you anymore. The little voices, are you with me? The little voices that are talking to you, the little voices that get you discouraged, the little voices that get you to back up, the little voices that get you frustrated, the little voices that if you keep listening to them, they'll make you give in, they'll make you give up. But let me tell you something. This is for somebody. God never starts anything that he doesn't have the power and, and, and the, the ability to finish it. Uh, he never starts anything that he doesn't intend to finish. So whatever he's decided, whatever, whatever, you know, how many know we quit too soon? We give up too easy. And we walk away from the miracle before God's really had a chance to do all he wants to do. Man, sometimes you just have to say, man, I'm just going to... I'm just going to stand in the, in the, in the rigor of, of feeling small. I'm just going to stand in this place of, of small beginnings. I'm just, I'm just going to, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and just say, hey, yes, God, I'm little. Hey, I'm just going to go ahead and stand anyway, though. I know it doesn't look good, but I'm just going to go ahead and be faithful anyway. I know it, if there's every reason in the world why it shouldn't work, but you know, God, I'm just going to keep on swinging. I'm just going to keep on standing. I'm just going to keep my, my faith going. I'm not going to listen to all those little voices I'll not despise the day of small things and I'll tell you what if you'll hold on if you'll hold on to what God's told you if you'll hold on to what you're believing if you'll hold on with that faith there will come a time there's a set time when God says that's enough just like he did for Jesus in hell he says that's enough and that enabling grace of God will come on you and raise you up. I'm so thankful that you've watched the broadcast. And some of you watching, you don't know Jesus. And so right where you are, just bow your head and say this prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. I want to be saved. I want to live for you, but I can't do it without you. I need your help. So forgive me of my sins and help me live for you. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, there's a number at the bottom of your screen. If you just dial that number and tell the counselor that you asked Jesus into your heart, we want to send you some information free of charge. Hey, I want you to know that I love you. More important than that, I want you to know that God loves you. Whatever is going on, whether it's the best time in your life or the worst and anywhere in between, we are always available to pray with you. 